All right, welcome back to the rest of the story. I'm down here checking what last night's supposed terrible frost did to my hay crop. Well, it got bit, but then again, it is for the most part grass. There is a bunch of clover mixed in with it, which I'm really not crazy about the clover. Um, I would actually rather just more have more just straight grass. But if you can see all around me, the fertilizer I put on was was pretty huge. Let's see here. Cell phone video once again because I'm updating my SD cards. I'm waiting for them to show up. Cell phone really isn't doing a whole lot of justice. Granted, I think my cell phone has better quality than the than the GoPro's been catching. But all through here, um, this got hit a little heavier than it was supposed to get. Um, I was originally putting down 200 pounds of fertilizer. I even did the hillsides here and the waterways. Those are pretty obvious. They've never had really any fertilizer before because, well, you guys can definitely tell on the screen here how dark the hillsides are up all the way around. Um, I actually ran around when the buggy was actually getting kind of low, lower. So, I mean, wasn't quite so top heavy. And you can actually tell, especially on that waterway over the hill there I mean you can definitely see where I was going around the hills and where it was broadcasting it and where it actually had hit um, those waterways in the past um, I've never seen them that look that healthy because I'm sure that they have really gotten much for for fertilizer because I'm standing in I mean this field right here for the most part has been row crops for several years so we've come to an agreement with the landlord the landlord is actually already in the mindset of just leaving it seated down and just making hay off of it which i am all for but um here's a good example of really how wet or how dry we are not how wet we were so just the soil that's down here, but you can see, I can get my finger down in this crack here. It is dry. I can get my finger pretty well all the way down in this crack. Uh, it is actually starting to get dry. Um, I said not that we could actually stand to go months without any real substantial rain well turns out that was a lie of course i didn't really mean it but you know it kind of gets your point across but we're actually down to where it's been weeks since we've had rain uh, we had what is today today's saturday and we got done planting I forget if it was it Sunday night or Monday morning or Tuesday morning where we got done planting and we got chased out of the field with a rain shower so we wouldn't have been able to plant the day we finished planting corn but even so it was enough to get the ground moist but not enough to really really do much. Um, it was a nice soaking slow rain but at the same time the ground was so dry as you guys just saw it really didn't do much uh, the crops i mean i don't know if you guys maybe oh i'm sure you can see the rain uh that is the 80 percent chance of rain we had coming tonight that is to the west by the way and i'm I'm hoping we actually get a nice soaker because 
the colors. Very prevalent. We have a bunch of seeding in the ground yet that really hasn't done anything from some of our first soybeans seeding that we put in. And that is, uh, well, they're, they're literally just under the surface. They're just starting to crack through, showing no signs of frost damage as far as I can tell. And I think it's supposed to warm up. I mean, today we actually was in the 60s, but here you can see. See, we're down the low. I, it's the reason we call this this farm the valley. But it's been bit. I mean, this stuff was actually going pretty rapidly, and it's been set back. By how much? I guess time will tell. Uh, the goal is to try to get this harvested June 1st, July 15th, and then probably September 15th. So. A rotation is actually expanding after every cutting so we got about three more weeks until we get to the first of june this stuff if we can get a decent rain will really take off uh, dad and i were saying that earlier today how we really don't need well we really do need just a good soaker that goes for probably two or three days really gets the ground moisture built back up and a lot of the the hay the corn the beans uh, the new seeding that we put in uh, will really take off and this place it's got a bunch of unwanted down here that i really would rather not have but if i had my sprayer set up to run i probably would have come down and actually sprayed a bunch of this off would have liked to but that kind of that window closed and the next time i actually hook up to the sprayer other than to get it ready to go i gotta do a bunch of uh wiring on it yet and I got to mount the controllers um, the next time I actually the first time I use the sprayer will be for putting down fertilizer liquid fertilizer on this particular farm that's why I bought that fertilizer well that sprayer and it's also why I went and bought the that new Holland rake is because this farm typically yields rocket uh, this farm typically yields tons and tons and tons to the acre for first cutting i'm looking for at least three and as long as the weather holds which always used to say oh don't hope for dry weather or wet weather because you you'll, you'll typically get it well we've had you know severe overly wet weather the last three years and we've been wishing for some nice drier weather and true to grandpa's words we may be getting it we might be getting too dry but time will tell. Um, some heat, more heat than what we're getting. Blue sky, sunshine. Man, I didn't realize this ground was cracked out this bad. This place does have a lot of gumbo on it. Down over, oh, just over the hill there it is actually the worst. I think you guys can really tell. The grass almost looks blue. It's all leaning over. I'm not sure if that's in part to the extra fertilizer it got on it that I probably shouldn't have done, or it is because of the cold well, uh, the cold we had last night. Because we're down right next to the river. I mean, the Grant is right there. Um, this place does actually kind of seems like it acts a little bit differently down here compared to up at home but it is pretty down here i will give it that especially in september when all the trees are turning uh, the first year we ran this uh, we were harvesting hay and all the trees were red and yellow and looked really neat so talking about the hay crops kind of dull but true to my word hay is going to be a uh, a bigger part of the crops I raise going forward. So, yeah, this stuff really needs a drink. I knew I needed it, but man, I didn't realize we were quite that bad. So, and yeah, and just like that, I went and tore up some of the the washouts that were here when I took the place over. 
and that does have grass seeded down in it and it is starting to come up just it's coming up awfully slow I mean I imagine if it had moisture when it was put in it just seems like that rain we got on Tuesday just didn't do anything because by the next day the ground had uh, already dried out there were guys planting the next morning already and I really don't like to say this but this wasn't harrowed by the way that's why we have the the clumps and that's kind of the gumbo really starting to show now my grass is growing oh yeah it is right there it's trying to anyway oh yeah you can roll it at least that is money well spent because for anybody that's had to actually make hay in rough field condition conditions and for the the washouts we had down through some of these i have a few up across there uh it really makes for a long day when you got to slow down and crawl across a a rough section of the field because really we need some rain to kind of mellow out some of these dirt clumps now right calvin same thing with the bottom that was actually flooded up till not that long ago and all the grass is greened up it is a little bit yellower it's pretty obvious where the bottom is compared to the ground that was fertilized about a month ago now and the reason i did not fertilize that whole bottom piece earlier on is because about two weeks after i was fertilized after i had fertilized this up here that was underwater and i can actually you guys i don't know if you can see my four-wheeler tracks because I do actually prefer to bring the four-wheeler down here and go across and check it. But I took the four-wheeler out across it. And it doesn't look like it. I know you can't see it, and I'm not about to walk down there, but that stuff is already knee-high. And this stuff is only about halfway up my calves. But, man, it's so wicked. Start yelling hello and see if I get an echo back. And that's... All my fingers. Yep, we need a rain. Pedal faster. Come on, dudes. I got rocket tonight, so I guess I gotta listen to the, both the dogs sit and snore. Calvin doesn't snore that bad, but when he does, he can put Brittany to shame. Because <laughs> I don't snore. Show of hands. Of all my viewers, how many guys are being told that they snore, but you know you're true, you really don't. It's just your wives are, are saying you do. <laughs> now, it does sure look nice down here. I'm much happier with this being a hay farm than trying to raise corn and beans down here. Uh, for the soil types, I think you guys can kind of can kind of understand why I would rather ra raise grass as opposed to... Uh, trying to get corn and beans growing down here that'll be the big uh deciding factor as to uh, how this place cash flows uh, because of that bottom floods and i can make only one cutting two cuttings three cuttings no cuttings i'll really decide what my cost production is really going to be end up being at the end of the year because I am keeping track of literally everything down to the fuel that is burned when we come down here to spread fertilizer, cut hay, ted hay, spray fertilizer, buying the fertilizer. I got just under $1,500 in fertilizer down here with the dry that I had spread. Granted, I did spread it kind of heavy. But I am actually going for quality and I'm going for tonnage because the more the more tons that I produce down here the lower my cost production because I'm not sure how much hay I'm gonna have to keep for my cattle and I'll be keeping track of that too but I actually have enough hay currently to last until the middle of July so I don't have to start feeding any new crop hay out until next year and this isn't the only hay that I have I have about seven acres elsewhere, which is 
a combination of mainly just waterways that I will be uh, that'll go entirely just to my cows so yeah maybe I don't look or act like or seem like I'm coming across as a good mood but corn and beans are in the ground planting is done I have to clean up the planter yet which you guys will probably be a part of that to show you what all goes into cleaning the planter up That stuff's really rolled over. It's all going that way. But the plan is not to cut this stuff as short as I can. I'm actually gonna keep it uh keep the cutter bar up a little bit. So I'm not I say shaving this grass off at ground level. Because I'm going for three cuttings, and, and if you leave a little bit of stubble, it does allow it to bounce back a little bit quicker for your next cut. So ideally, like the field ground here, I can do three cuttings off that, I'm pretty confident. If I really wanted to push it, I could probably do four. But I don't want to push it so thin that in the end, I'm down here basically just cutting dust you know, for a fourth cutting. But we got three weeks to basically get ready for, for, for hay season, which is a lot better than last year when we were unhooking the planter and hooking up the disc bind to go cut hay in the same day. At least that's what it felt like. And I'm actually feeling really good about how this looks down here. So Rocket beat me back to the truck. I'm hoping you guys are excited as I am about trying to get this this place made hopefully three times at least twice but I guess the weather is the big deciding factor so thanks for tuning in thanks for watching take care take it easy keep in touch